Okay, welcome everyone. Um, this is the sort of like quickie seeming workshop um, that it was originally uh, for my Block Builder Club members who could attend and hopefully those who could not can watch it later. Um, this will be a really informal class. I'm gonna show you four or five techniques, but we can stop at any point. That's the benefit of having this nice small group. Um, for questions um, and uh, anything else. So I'm gonna be mostly working as a reference off the reference point of the Block Builder Club 12 or 16 inch squares, but these methods obviously will work for anything that you're seeming um, for knitting or crochet that has similar stitch patterns. Meaning um, I'm working off of the borders of the knit ones, which are all garter stitch and the crochet version are all single crochet. So that'll be sort of our, you know, guiding star. So we're going to cover in this mattress stitch for garter horizontal, mattress stitch for single crochet, um, three needle bind off, picking up stitches and then three needle bind off and single crocheting two pieces together. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so four skills that you can use for either the knit or the crochet pieces. Um, it'll work for either way. So these are not the end all be all. If you've got something else, another technique that you love, you should do it. Whatever makes you comfortable, as I always say, you do you. These are just um, the te techniques that I like the most and um, think would be the most applicable to our particular Block Builder Club. So I'm going to use the other camera, which you can see. Um, let me see if I can pin it. I'm gonna pin that. Um, I'm gonna use the other camera to show hands. I have the mic off at this point. If I need to swap mics, somebody just let me know and I'll do that. Um, in fact, I'll do a test. Can you still hear me if I'm over here? Yes. Still yes. Good? Still good? Okay. Yep. Um, all right. So, Anne, can you see the camera with the stitching in it well enough? Is everybody yep. good? Yep. Okay. So, before I dive right in, why don't we, uh, do we want to talk about, I'd love to just check in with you on your block builder squares. Um, I'd love to hear what, uh, which square you're working on. Um, and if you had a particular stitch pattern block that you really loved, um, I would love to know that just for future, for future years of future clubs. Barbara, how about you? I want to hear my answer. <laughs> I haven't started them. Oh, no worries. Hey, this is no, like this, there's none of that. Like we don't do that. Like you do it when you can do it. And if you don't, you can just look at it. No guilt. Yep. I'm, I'm saving them up and I'm going to do them up one after the other after the holidays. I love it. I love that you have a plan. So this is just, you're just gathering intel at this point. Yep. yep. Right. Uh, what about Karen? Have you started? Oh, yes. I haven't started number four because I've been doing the advent scarf for this month. I actually um, just went through, I ordered, I had gotten two boxes of the, um, the starter kits. Oh. So today I just went through and I ordered an additional hank of each one of those that I only have one of right now because I want to do the whole thing in That's the awesome. Montoya Merino. Right. I absolutely love all of these different stitches. I love them. Oh, I'm so love happy. Them. I'm so happy. Um, I really have enjoyed the themes for both so far. Um, it's been fun to try and find ones that sort of fit in the same bucket. Um, so that's really great to great to hear. Is Would anybody else like to share? Alrighty, well, how about we dive in? So I'm gonna move over to the other camera and we are going to start with our mattress stitch for side to side seaming. Okay, so mattress stitch is something that's really sort of, actually, I'm gonna turn my, monitor so I can see myself too because I am too short to see <laughs> too short to see the the actual camera up here. All right. So mattress stitch is sort of the go-to stitch for knitters when it comes to seaming in general, but normally we look at it as um, it relates to stockinette stitch or stitch patterns like this one that are on a bed of stockinette stitch. But for our blocks, 
we are we decided to include a garter border just for the uniformity of an overall blanket should you decide to uh, make the blanket instead of making i'm going to let somebody else in instead of making uh, one of the modular projects like the pillow or the scarf or the purse um, as we go so it's worked very similar but there's just some slight differences first of all i highly recommend getting some kind of clips like these you can get them their little sewing clips or you can use the coconut clip claws or you can even use you know some wooden pins or if you in a pinch you could use a um you could use clothes pins let me see if i can zoom in just a little bit more mm, not so much okay so what i need what i'm gonna do i'm losing my camera again is Vicki, didn't we get those clips in one of your boxes? You got, you got not these clips. You got, um, okay. you got some cocoa clips a couple of years ago. Yeah. Cocoa right. Cocoa. Um, I've lost my camera, so I'm not seeing it. Can you guys still see me? Yes. But yes. we can see you. It's not facing down onto the table. You can't see my hands anymore. No. Oh, I wonder if it, oh, it kicked me off. Okay, give me just one second. Talk amongst yourselves, <laughs> I'm gonna rejoin. The weather may be. Yeah, I happen to have the, the, the coconut cloth clip clips that we got. Oh, you do? Oh, great. Andy. Okay. Hi. I got those Love too. Coconuts. Yeah. Yeah, and these are one of those tools that you can never have. And I'm really sorry that you had to see that, unfortunate view. Um, <laughs> let's see. Okay. Hi. Terrible view. Yeah, I actually picked up at a, um, a, a weird sale that I went to locally. They had a bunch of um, event stamped. Um, toiletry bags that are kind of flippy opening and with a little handle on the top and then it's got all sorts of clear baskets in net pockets and my plan I got this for a whole dollar fifty um, is to start moving my notions and you know like the clips and the pom-pom makers and the the whatnot that we get with the Yarnier boxes into this so I can actually find them. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a great idea. Okay. Not really letting me zoom. We're going to have to improv a little here, so please be patient. Take this down and see if that helps. I've been working on um, trying to get some ways to organize all the booklets too, and it's really hard to find there. Can you see that? Does that work? Yeah, I can see it okay. Everybody see hands or not hands, but at least knitting? Yes, <laughs> yes, it looks All good. Right. Take 75, let's do this. Okay, so this is, in case you've forgotten in the 77 minutes it took to get set up, um, this is garter side to side. So um, using mattress stitch. So first of all, choosing the color that you want to, um, that you want to use to do all your seaming is important, but the goal is for it not to show unless you decide you want it to. My only sort of recommendation is that you choose whatever color you decide to do a border, if you're gonna do a border at the end, and that's something that, we, that we'll talk about as we progress through the months, I would say also seam with that just for some uniformity. But that's just my preference. Again, if you like things to be all crazy spice, you should do it. All right, so we are going to start by joining our colors. I'm using a contrasting color just so you can see it. This, is, this would not be the choice um, if you weren't. Also, again, I've used these clips. 
your squares may not be exactly right. You might have been stressed out one day or had a lot of wine another day and your gauge might be off a little bit or whatever. So you might have blocked them as close to 16 by 16 as you as you can, but they may be tight, slightly off. So that's why it's important to clip them together. You wanna to do it at the top and at the center at least. You can do it more if you want to, but at least that. All right. So to join a new piece of yarn, you want to start up at least a couple of inches before your end that you're going to start on and just kind of weave in. You're preemptively weaving in the end. Alternatively, you could skip this and you could just leave a tail and weave it in later, but I like to start this way. And then you just pull it through. Okay, and now we're set up and ready to go. All right, so on one side, you are going to notice, so in the garter, I feel like I wanna be even closer. Okay, so on one side, you are going to see little bumps that look like like a cup or a U. On the other side, it'll look like an upside down cup or an N without it, the little stem. So we're going to be working in those. So I'm gonna actually come up at a different place. Are you working these on the right side? Yes. Okay. So right side facing, edge to edge. Okay, so we are going to come up under the little uh, smile or the little like cup, but also there's a little thread right behind that. Let me see if I can get closer. So there's the little bump now we're ignoring the little side bump that's kind of half of a, a, you know, half of an oval. Instead, we're going to we're going to be working in the little smiles or little cups that are all, that are full that we can see. So we're going underneath that, but also underneath the little strand that you can see right underneath it. And you're going to pull through. Now, normally, if you were doing this, you would not pull this up the way that I did because it helps to have them laying side by side. Um, but Zoom is not being cooperative as far as me getting, giving you a closer look, so we're making do. Okay, so then you're gonna go over to the next side. The next side, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be working under the upside down cups, but also the strand that'll be underneath it. So can you guys see that, that little strand? Okay, so you're going to go underneath both of those and pull, all right. I'm gonna back this out a little bit. And that is the lather, rinse, repeat. So you are going to, remember, we're not going on these side bumps. We're going into underneath the little cup and strand that's right above it, pull. And I'm leaving it a little loose so that you can see the stitching happening, but I'll show you in a second that it'll look fairly invisible. It's not going to be as invisible because I'm using a contrasting color, but no, so now we're going to go over to the opposite side. We see the corresponding downward cup. We're going underneath the strand and underneath the cup. And that is all there is to it. So we're going to go under, pull, and as you can see, ignore this because I didn't pull uh, when we started because I wanted you to be able to see. It buries, can you see how this, if this was a, a lighter color, it would bury more, right into, it nestles into the, um, into the squishiness of the garter. Now, you're not working a bunch of squares that are all the same color, so you're not gonna be able to coordinate um, with both. That's just part of the fun of this blanket. But what it does do, if you can see this, 
is it starts to pull the garter together so that it kind of nestles them in. So that little edge will start to fall or start to close in. And that's all there is for that. You just do that all the way up along the side. Does anybody have any questions? What does the backside look like on that? The backside is where the seam is. So okay. this is why you would why you do it on the on the right hand side, because you will get, see, these are the rolling in edges of those side parts that we were ignoring. That will be on the back. Now, okay. if, you, if you like the look of that, that exposed seaming, you could do it on the back. Probably not the most appealing idea for something that is different colored squares, but it can look cool in projects that are tone on tone to have that exposed seam. Anything else? I had a question. Um, if you were um, not showing us, what, which of the two colors would you recommend for doing the seam? I think probably I would go for a neutral for, for, for these because I would tie everything in, assuming that there's a bunch of other colors as well. I would just choose a neutral that I thought would work and match all of them. And then sort of get that at uniformity then. Um, because these are sort of- Okay, so- color, I'd probably go with- One this. color through. I'm sorry, you cut out. Uh, Libby, I think you froze. So one for, for seaming the entire piece. I, yes. Yeah. That, and I'm then sorry. also, if you're going to do an edging, I would do an edging that way. And then it just makes it feel intentional, if that makes sense. Yep. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Um, any other questions before I move on to single crochet? Or rather, match single, uh, mattress stitch for single crochet. All right. So move these. Make sure nobody's waiting. Okay, so just like with our knit pieces, we are going to set up our crochet squares so that they are right side facing. Again, I'm using a contrasting color uh, just so you can see. Here's an example of, we have different people making these here. So if, I, if I have the time, I make the square. If I don't, Becky, um, our associate maker makes it um, and we have, sometimes the different interpretations, even when we're checking our gauge. So it might be a little, a little bit different. So that's when you do what's called ease. So you need to stretch one and bunch one in the case if they're a little bit off. And this also happens if your gauge is fine, but this one is a lot lacier than this one. So this is when these clips again are really, really helpful. So, for crochet, again, I would bury, I would bury this, um, or like I'll show you this way this time, you can leave a long enough tail for seaming and you can come up, you wanna come up on your corner. So there's a couple things that you can do here. You could either work in just the front loop. So the crochet, the construction of a crochet stitch actually on top looks a lot like a knit stitch, right? It's this upside down raindrop. So if you wanted, you could work with just in, just in the front loops and that would cause, uh, that would create a roll in of your fabric, which would be very nice, but you may want something a little bit stronger since this is a blanket and will hopefully get a lot of love and a lot of use. So I recommend, again, if you can either weave in your tail now or later, coming up under, underneath both loops, but we're going to be working in the leg of the single crochet stitch. Can you see that? So we're gonna come up and we're gonna pull the yarn through that. So then we go over to the next side. And we're coming underneath. I'm gonna try and get it up to where you can see it again. and you'll pull it, I wanna make sure that my tail stays out, you'll pull it to the side. And then you're just going to do that all the way along. So pull, go to the next side, 
Cool. Now, since I didn't start, uh, I didn't weave in the end this time, I'm able to pull it on this side so you guys can see. Other than the green, it really is relatively invisible on the right side. And I'll show you the wrong side after I get a few more done. But can you see how it's really closing in? I will say that if you're already crocheting a piece, it's faster to single crochet them together. Um, but if you just like the handiwork of, of seaming, this is absolutely an option. So you're just going underneath the leg. And then on the back, much like, oops, I caught my loop, but you get the idea. Much like with the, the knit piece, you're just getting the seam of the two tops of the rows. And that's all there is to that. Any questions? Nope, so far so good. Okay. Let us move on then. Oops. Okay, next up, let's talk about single crochet. Let me pull these in. So I'm bringing in knitting pieces because for, for the crocheters, I'm gathering that you already know how to do this, but for knitters, you may not know how to join the yarn. Uh, let me grab a color that's contrasting. Nope, not that one. So the only thing to be conscious of if you have knit pieces and you're crocheting is that the gauge of crochet may be different than your knit piece. And so you may end up having to play around a little bit until you get how uh, far apart you, you uh, make your stitches. It's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's, it's a really fast way and a really sturdy way to seam. So it's worth the effort. So this time I have my pieces wrong sides together instead of side by side. I'm, I'm actually doing a top seam now. It doesn't really matter, um, but you want them together because this will uh, keep the seam facing you. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a tail and a slip knot, which is just a, as a reminder, you make a little cursive. E and you push the loop through the E loop. All right, then we are placing our loop on our hook and you wanna use a corresponding hook to the size of your needle. So I used, to knit these, I used a size at nine 5.5 millimeter set of needles. So I'm using an I nine 5.5 millimeter hook. That said, Gauge for crochet is highly subjective. Uh, there's not a, another needle to hold your stitches uniform. So if you find that your piece is starting to bunch as you go along, or if you, just, if you feel like it's getting really ruffled, just go up a hook or go up or down a hook size or two to prevent that. Okay, so we are going to go under our loops. And this is a cast on edge, I can tell because it's not really the clearest of where the stitch is. It looks a little more braided, but we're gonna go through, you hear the train, the edge. So we're gonna go under the front one, the front piece and the back piece. And this yarn needs to be, uh, your working yarn needs to be over here on the right side of your needle before you insert your hook into the piece. So you are always going to count the two widths of fabric, these two fabrics, as just one loop. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through them both as if they were one. So now your yarn's attached, which is great, and that's the beginning of your first single crochet stitch. You'll yarn over again, pull through both, and your first crochet stitch is made and also you've joined your yarn. All right, now you're going to go next. And this is where you sort of just, you're for the, your squares, you did not always have the exact same cast on number. Different gauges um, are involved in different stitch patterns. So you kind of have to just make it work. So for here, I can see they're not lining up perfectly, but I can kind of eyeball it and see if I go under those loops, that's gonna probably be pretty good. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. And then we're gonna take, we're gonna stop and we're gonna survey 
and see how it's going. I'm going underneath these loops. I only got some of my strands, which is the nature of applied yarn. So I'm going to take that out and go back in, readjust, yarn over, pull through your pieces, yarn over, pull through. All the way across. So let me take this out. So you can see now again, this is another option where if you wanted an exposed seam, and you were doing a contrast in color. This one is actually a pretty cool seam. It's a better looking seam, frankly, than the one that we were doing, working on with mattress stitch. You would have this, this line of chain stitches or what looks like chain stitches. It's really single crochets, but you would get that on the outside. That could actually be very cool, but we chose to have it be a little more hidden. As hidden as it can be when you're not using the same exact color for both, for both shades. And that's that. So this does require a little, a little imagination. You kind of have to just along the way match up based on where your piece is laying. You can't just go, okay, it's one stitch, it's one stitch, it's one stitch. You kind of line them up and say, okay, this is laying really flat. So I'm gonna go and make those two loops work and so on and so on. But it is the most sturdy um, stitch there is. So especially if you are going to risk all and machine wash your blanket, this is a really good route to go. All right, is there so any questions? Going through, through both loops? Yes. On the edging? Okay. I, I feel like that's sturdier. Okay. If you were to go through only one loop, you would need to go through the back loop. Here, let me show you with this. So this was a cast on edge. So this one actually doesn't have the same construction of the stitch. It sort of does. I guess you could pick it up that way, but I just don't think it looks as nice. So if you're yeah. working with a cast on edge, I've just gone under this one loop. But for these- I almost always use a crochet cast on, so both edges look the same for me. Okay, well, perfect. But <laughs> for your other one, so for this piece, it was a nice bound off edge, so that's clear what I do. Yeah. Um, but if you wanted to only go through one loop, you would go through the front loop of this piece of the back piece so that you didn't have a loop curl in on your right side. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? No, we good? Okay. So I'm going to, for our last one, the last one, this is for people who loathe with their whole heart and soul seeming um, because, because it takes a little bit more work than, you know, probably is necessary. But again, if you despise hand seaming, you know, hand sewing, especially for, this one's predominantly for knitters. Um, although crocheters, if you are also knitters and would like to do it this way, like you absolutely could. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick up stitches on the right side of your piece, or you could just not cast off or bind off any of your squares and put them on waste yarn until you're ready to start piecing. Either way, you need live, the point is, is that you need live stitches. Um, so this, this technique takes three needles of the exact same size. So for us, that's a size nine um, and you can use it, you can you need it to be either a double pointed needle or a circular needle only because you want to pick up the stitches on the right hand side. But you want the pieces to be wrong sides together. And so one of your uh, one of your pieces would be on the on the wrong side of the needle. So you need to be able to, after you've picked up stitches, let me show you here. And actually, let me take this out and show you what I mean by pick up stitches. So we're going to go underneath both of the loops, yarn over and pick up a stitch. And this is picking up and knitting because you are introducing new yarn versus just pulling up loops of the already made stitches. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. That's new yarn you're using to pick it those is. up. It is. Okay. But if you never bound off, 
you don't have right. to, sorry about this shot, that's a lot. Um, you wouldn't have to do this step, but I can't have both of my pieces. I can't make them right. Uh, I can't put them wrong, excuse me, right sides together with the needles facing the same way as I picked them up. So one of them, I need to slide it all the way down to the other side, which is why you need a circular. Um, for our pieces, you definitely need a circular. They're too big for DPNs. For these little pieces, I could have used either. Okay, so you want to put the your two pieces and this, you do need to have equal amounts of stitches for this. So if, however, you have to fake it till you make it to get it as even as possible, but at, without bunching in or wrinkling it. I believe in you, you can do it, just know that. So then you wanna hold them um, together. Oops. You wanna hold them together as if you were one. And this is a great technique for um, binding off at shoulder seams as well. So then you would either introduce a new yarn or um, if you never bound off on one of your pieces, you probably still have yarn connected. So now what we're gonna do is we're just going to knit them together. So we're going to insert our needle as if to knit and knit the two stitches together. So on the front piece and the back piece, slip them onto our third needle. Then we're gonna repeat that process. We're inserting knitwise on both stitches knitting the stitch, dropping it off. Now we start binding off. We take our tip of one of our needles and let the stitch fall off. And that's all there is to it. So we're going to knit two together, pull one stitch over the next stitch. And I would say that this provides an equivalent, almost an equivalent to, um, in strength seam as single crochet. Not quite as much because the construction of single crochet involves knots instead of loops, but pretty dang close. Okay, so then you flip it over and you will definitely see more of the seam with this one, but it does create similar looking loops to your stitches. If you, were to, if you were to do it on your right side, this is what the seam would look like if you wanted an exposed seam. And that is that. Do you have any questions? No? All right. What do you call that again? What, do you, what did you call oh, it? Three, three needle bind off. Thank you. And that is that. Those are four different methods that you can use to put your squares together. Um, do we have any questions about any of the things or anything Block Builder Club related? I was thinking about doing like a crochet edge. I'm doing the knitted squares and mm -hmm. I was contemplating, you know, in the whatever color I decided to seam in to go ahead and just do a single crochet around all of my knit squares and then mm -hmm. do my seaming. Any thoughts, considerations? Yeah, um, I think that that's a really solid idea. It will, since garter stitch is um, essentially ribbing, your big thing will just be making sure that you get an even uh, stitch around because um, it'll be really easy for it to ruffle. So really, I would just experiment. I think it's a good idea but you will have seams that show most likely if you do it that way, but it, that could be a design feature and why not? Just make sure that you, again, like just like we were talking about before, if you're just make sure that you work a few stitches. If you see that it is ruffling, that means that you have too many stitches, too many single crochets. So that means that you either need to spread them out or you could try going um, up a hook size. If you start to see it bunching in, that means that you don't have enough stitches. So you either need to fill in more. So that might mean you, you need to do, which wouldn't be the case with this, but just so you know, in the future, you might need to make two single crochets in one you know, knit row, or you would go down a needle size, hook size rather. Hmm. 
So if you're knit, knitting, which which version would be the best if you're gonna, like if I'm, I'm gonna do a blanket, you're gonna end up seeing the other side. Which do you think is the best to make it look the best for a knitted blanket? I honestly, I think that when you're doing a, a patchwork project like this one, that is multiple colors, you really need to just sort of embrace that seaming as part of the overall design um, and be okay with, with that. So I would probably, I think I would probably use mattress stitch still if I were doing the knit version. That's what as I much think. As, as much as I was, just, as much as I would prefer single crochet because it's so much faster, um, just because of how flowy and drapey these squares are, and how firm a single crochet stitch is. I think that as far as the overall shaping of the blanket, the drape of the blanket, I think that you might find more success with mattress stitch. Thank you. Um, Thank you. It's so much, it, you know, it's kind of a no brainer with the crochet versions, like single crochet makes sense. We did, uh, we did half double crochet borders, but you know, it all works together. Um, you could do half double crochet together too. Um, if you wanted, but that's that's really sort of easy. But I would I would definitely I, I would consider doing the the hand seaming. I know it's more work, but I think ultimately you might dig it more. And if you start to feel like Ugh, this is just like it's bothering me that I'm seeing it, I would just lean into it more and maybe even do some like hand like hand tying like you would in quilts. Do you know what I'm saying with the yarn with little pieces of yarn and tie it so you make it a design feature. It looks like it's you know, it, this looks like it is intentional. Just have fun with it and play with it. And just know that this kind of project is not meant to be, you know, something that is super chic. It's not, I mean, it's not. It, if, it, if you wanted it to be that way, then you should do one color all the way through. But this, this particular experience is about playing with color, playing with different stitch patterns. So for this, let this be a playful project, you know? Okay, if, thanks. If, I was just going to say, it's a good thing you have so many colors because I want to stay with the same yarn. <laughs> oh, good. All I'm, so I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Um, and as we get closer to the end, um, we will provide some options for um, edges. Um, and I know that we've got a couple of questions of how much yarn to use for that. I do not do the math, so I'm going to talk to my tech editors to do to uh, calculate what, what's needed based on the stitches that we're using. And we'll release that probably midway through, which is in just a couple months for people that are, I mean, we could wait until the end, but we'll probably do it midway through. Um, yeah. All right. Any other questions? Vicki, um, I was thinking about, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, can we, can we have a, a check-in after month six or seven for when we're looking at the, getting the four corners together? Cause that's one thing that's always kind of dissatisfied me is how it looks when I'm joining when I have two, two or more rows and I've got that, that corner where four squares are intersecting. Oh, like in the middle. Yes. Oh yeah. Let me confab with the team about that. Yeah. That's a new request. Let me think on that one. That's a great question. Yeah, no, I never, I hadn't even really considered that. Let me, I'm going to take that one to the team. Okay. Because when I've tried to do it in the past, it always winds up looking does your corner bunch? Is that it, what it, it bunches or it just doesn't sit as nicely as I would like it to. Okay. I I know people don't love doing this, but I I this blanket will greatly benefit from blocking because of all oh, yeah. the seaming, seaming. So that'll help a lot with those corners. But yes, we'll think on it. Um you have to do just like when you're doing an edging, you have to do more more stitches in the corner, but Yes, I'm going to talk to the team about that. And I think that that's an excellent idea. Um, I guess that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So somewhere like around the seventh or eighth before there's, okay. Right. I'm, going to, I'm going to write that down because I will forget. Okay. Thank you, Mary Jo. Okay, Deborah. Yes. Um, so, you know, I'm a seamstress. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking of, of doing each block on my machine. Ooh. And then I picked out this like fabric. I'm, I'm not really sure about the fabric yet. I wanted the fabric to be on the other side. Oh, you're going to back it. I love so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to back it with, so I'm going to make it sort of like it's for me, of course, but I want to make it as 
a knitted piece for myself, but also a sewing piece for myself. Now, should I do the squares like you just explained or can I do them on my machine? Yes. Because I've done yes. sweaters on my machine because it's easier. So, so I hesitate to have you even try it on your actual squares. If you feel like you could do like little swatches. Yeah, yeah. At least, at least four inches. This one's more like six inches. It would be better. Yeah. I'd really... I'd suggest trying that first and running it through because it, your tension will change everything. Yeah, that's how it's a really long stitch. Um, it makes me a little nervous, but I also think it could be incredible. And if you yeah. do get it, I would love if you would share like a video yeah. or a tutorial. Yeah. Or a I would love if you would share that with the group. Okay. Um, because that is, um, that's a whole other level that I think is super fun. So, Yes, play with that, but please play okay. with it on swatches and not on your piece yes. because there's no turning back, you know? Well, I was also thinking about if I did it on my machine, then I could add fabric pieces to it too, to make it bigger. It, it would have to be probably like a polar fleece or something to not be wonky. It would need to be the same yeah. weight, essentially. Right, okay. Uh, I love the idea of doing a, a fabric backing and then that alleviates, um, Whose question was it? Maybe it was Mary Jo's. It was Barbara. No, it was Barbara's like issue was what the back was going to look like. You right. Know? Yes. Uh, I mean, there's also, oh, you know, have you seen, um, and they carry it everywhere, like at a Joann's or whatever, the, it's either a cotton or a jersey. I've seen it both. That's already pre-quilted. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like it, it's, um, I've done, I've backed a couple, I've made t-shirt, uh, you know, those t-shirts quilts. I've made them for my, oh, my I've kids, made my, kids my husband, and I get this like pre-quilted either jersey or cotton. And so it already has that like mushy gushy to it, this to it. It might be too thick to back it, but it would be probably fine for if you were creating other squares because it's about the same depth because the depth of this piece is probably pretty close to a quarter of an inch. Okay. You know, so if you're trying to get squares to lay up with it, you want to make sure that you've got that width. Otherwise, it's, it's just not going to drape well. So once it's done, what is the actual size of it? Do you know? I do know because we did the math. Um, okay. But so we have to do, what is that? 16 times 12, right? I don't yeah. have mine. Whatever 16 tw <laughs> times 12 is, and then we've got 192. Wait, that's the area though. No. Right? So it's going to be it's like four by three squares. Yeah. So 16 times four is going to be one right. dimension. 16 times three yeah, is the I think other. It's in the, it's, I think it's in the 48 by 60 range. I have it written down somewhere and I can post that somewhere. Okay. Uh, it's just been a minute. It's, it's a lap gam size. Right. It's like 48 by 64. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly right. what it is. <laughs> so four feet by, I was going to say four feet, feet by five feet. So that's pretty, pretty close. Um, so it's, it's a lap gant size. So if you want a full throw size, uh, the challenge for us was if we were going full throw, that would have meant having you, having you to make maybe 20, 20 inch squares, maybe even more. And that just didn't seem as doable for a month. That was, that's almost like you're, you're halfway to a baby blanket at that point to do that every single month just seems like a lot to ask, you know, for yeah. a club like this. So we started with that. Um, but you could always make more of any of the squares. If you found a stitch pattern that was kind of maybe one of the more simple ones, the ones that aren't as like flashy could be sort of your glue, you know, you could just sort of smatter them throughout it and you could create a larger blanket that way. I was almost thinking about doing two of each but then I think that's just almost too much. <laughs> it depends. Do you want it to go on your bed? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Somewhere the dogs can't get it. Cause every blanket that I have done, their nails get in there and start. Oh, they're, no, everything. they're getting it and they will ruin it. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> someone with a puppy right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, your last advent, not this year, but last year, each day we did a stitch pattern. Mm-hmm. So we can also maybe kind of, I'll go through all those and see which other ones I can make with it. 
Because every and day this I year is, this pattern. Even yeah. this year's are pretty cool. Like yeah. I won't go into week four, mm-hmm. but I'm doing week four right now and when love does, it. When does week four start? The next week next week oh i'm okay. sorry today's saturday so it starts tomorrow two, i think i think karen is is she karen or karen she's it's karen karen. She is karen. Okay. she's karen okay karen i know so she's karen she spelled it c-a-r-i-n karen scassell who owns scassell knitting is k-a-r-i-n and, oh, yeah. <laughs> and i'm often going back and forth talking to both of them it's, that's got to be hard. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so she's Karen. So what were you going to say about her? She, she posts it, I believe, on Tuesdays. I think the first one was on Wednesday the 1st, and then every other one has been on Tuesday. Yeah, I have the dates on the tags. It's so funny. When you run a monthly business like we do, that like the advent seems like 7,000 years ago, even though it was. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. You know, it's like I go into a fugue state. We're already on to January. Right. So, my point was, as I was going to show you at least the finished knitted one, but I, I won't do it if it's not, if it isn't the start of the fourth week yet. Yeah. So, the fourth so. week though, I will tell you that the, 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 the stitch, the stitch that we're doing, the pattern that we're doing, I absolutely love. And I've been looking and looking and looking for something to do an infinity scarf for my sister. Uh huh. I might do that. I don't know, because I love the blocks too. So I've been thinking about doing one with one of those or yeah. I don't know. You know what I'm, yarn are you going to use? Do you know? Probably yours. I just love this yarn. I love so it. I love that you're yeah. saying that. And I would love you to do that, but I also highly recommend getting more of the advent yarn. If we have it left, that's the fully spun. Okay. The colors, the colors are to die for. Yeah. Okay. I just ordered two of each today. They're so pretty. They're I mean, very they're, pretty. they're so pretty. Um, I'll show you. I'm sitting right here. Since we're still here, that's that's the teal one was fully spun. Yeah, I'll show you. Hold on. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and end this class so people don't hear our just like us hanging out. Um, I'm sorry. End the recording. All right. So hopefully we got all of our questions answered. Linda had a question in the chat. Yeah. I'm sorry. Was there a question in the chat? Yes. Oh, thank you for that. So I'm not ending it. Uh, oh, Linda, uh, do you suggest blocking each block separately before joining? 170,000 percent. Yes. Oh, good. Because good. because a stitch pattern like this is a great example. So this one has uh, lace um, columns. <coughs> also, I'm losing my words. Oh, herringbone bone which pulls because of the way that the strands. So this one had to be blocked to get to 16 inches. This one had to be negative blocked. It got, it grew a little much, yes. so a little too much. So I had to like, it just depends. So you, you want to do that before and not, and not have to do so that when you're sitting down to seam, however you're seaming, um, you don't cry is really it. <laughs> All right, any other questions? All right, if you come up with any, please, you can always just post in the comment section of this video or go into the Yarnier group for sure. Um, we will check back in as we progress. Um, this is the, obviously the first time that we've done a, a Block of the Month Club. So we are always open to suggestions. And if you have questions, please make sure um, that you reach out. And that is it for now. <laughs>